So today we're gonna to be talking about the SI-124 from FLIR. It's an acoustic imaging camera with 124 microphones, has the ability to scan up to about 100 meters or 328 feet. It has two primary applications uh, for leak detection and compressed air systems, vacuums and pressures, and also locating partial discharge, corona arcing tracking uh, from high voltage electrical systems. And we use ultrasound because it takes the inaudible high frequency ultrasonic sound waves caused by turbulence or turbulent flow from pressures or vacuums or electrical discharge, arcing, tracking, corona, so on and so forth. And it heterodynes the inaudible signal into an audible sound that we can hear in the sound recordings and through our headsets. Uh, ultrasound works really well in loud plant environment because it doesn't hear audible low frequency sound like people talking, hands clapping, or plant noise. And so the SI-124 converts that sound into a visual color pattern to allow the user not only to pinpoint the exact location of the leak, but based on the color, it will show which leaks or discharge are the most severe based on the intensity of that color. And this instrument stores those images and sound recordings while displaying cost savings on the screen for air leaks and records a sound file for electrical, which FLIR's AI will take in, process, look for patterns and output analysis of the electrical noise. And so the way it works is it records sound files two seconds by default, which can be adjusted uh, before you hit record. So if you're, you're trying to view a sporadic or an intermittent event, you can witness it in real time and still record it. And so this SI-124 by no means will replace an ultrasonic instrument or an IR camera, but simply will be a, a complementary tool for a more efficient air leak survey and electrical inspection. So what I'm going to be going over today is the camera operation and the interface of the instrument itself. So here we have our FLIR SI-124 sonic imager and the carrying case that it's included. Uh, in the box, we have our charging cable here on the left-hand side. That charges our battery power supply, which is hardwired to the camera during operation with the coiled cable. Uh, and then our USB for data transfer plugs into the top of the camera. And our quick start guides up here on the top are also included. All right, to get started powering up the camera, we're gonna plug this portion into the battery and our little Lemo connection on the other side into the bottom of the camera. Just note that the red dot is the orientation of the cable that goes into the camera. It only goes on one way, so you need to line those up. Once we plug that into the camera, there's our red light indicating that the camera's automatically booting up. Uh, the camera itself has three separate heat sinks. It's got one on top, one on the right side, and then one on the left side to pull heat away from the camera. It's also got a USB drive on the top for data transfer of images and files. Uh, the crank camera interface has a uh, resistive touch screen as well, so you can wear gloves. On the front side, we have all 124 of our microphone sensors, well, thus the SI-124, and then the center uh, of, of the camera here has a little digital camera. Uh, which is what we're seeing on board the imager itself. On the interface of the SI-124, in the top left-hand corner, we have our max decibels, uh, dBs displaying the intensity of the leak, our leak estimate down below that in CFM. Our magnifying glass is for our two-time zoom in the top left corner. Our multi-source multi and single-source mode is right below that, we're picking up more than one leak at a time. Our brightness menu for the screen brightness, Settings menu in the bottom left-hand corner, our file storage for images and our snapshot uh, for recording. In the top right-hand corner is our filters. We have three filters on the camera, um, which basically are application specific and adjust frequency as you go from application to application. Down below that is our distance adjustment dial. Uh, and the distance adjustment dial is there for the air mode just to compensate for the fact that intensity of the air leaks are reduced at a distance uh, when we're looking at them. So that's going to tie into our cost quantification, which is also displayed on the screen on the top right-hand corner. In the settings menu, there's our network settings, our change mode from air and power based on electrical applications and compressed air and vacuum applications. Um, in the settings down below that, our advanced settings is where we set up our cost uh, for kilowatt hour for compressed air, what we pay. Um, other settings for uh, CFM, um, you know, different environmental temperatures, things like that. And then our file storage, we have our images. Once these images are removed from the camera and put in the software, they're no longer available on the camera. 
Getting into the operation of the camera a little bit, in the bottom right-hand corner, I have a valve stem that's leaking uh, with a yellow color to it. It's a high-intensity leak. Uh, and right now I'm in single source mode, which means that it's only picking up the highest intensity leak in the field of view. Once I move that leak out of the field of view, I can see there's another leak down the line of the compressor. Um, but when I look at both of them in the same field of view, it only shows me the highest intensity. So I need to isolate the field of view to be able to see other leaks. I can use zoom for that. Um, or I could use multi-source mode to pick up more than one leak, but it's only going to record the highest intensity leak in multi-source mode. Now looking at multi-source mode, uh, we see more than one leak. So in this mode, we're going to pick up not only the highest intensity leak, but a lower intensity leak, which would be the one on the left-hand side here. So when I hit that, I got multiple leaks in the field of view. So now looking at the same leaks in single source mode, if I move that out of field of view again, there's our leak popping up as I move down the line. And again, as I look at our third leak on the line of the compressor. So here I have my squeeze bottle and we talked about, you know, being able to see the pressure. If I squeeze the bottle itself, you see that the decibel intensity goes up. But what I show you is you can also get the vacuum when you actually let go of the bottle. So when I squeeze down, you see the pressure. When I let go, you're also getting some of the turbulent flow from the vacuum as well. Hey folks, Eric Fritz with IE Technologies here. Thanks for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, give us a like or subscribe to our channel. If there's anything that we can help with, please visit our website, give us a call or shoot us an email, we'd be happy to help.